In a minute, the new series of Carrots Lib. First, a news report. In the United States, a security serviceman was seized and held hostage for a while by a gunman at a golf club where President Reagan was playing. The gunman's now been arrested. He'd crashed a truck through the club's gates in Augusta in Georgia while the president was out on the course with the Secretary of State George Shultz and the Treasury Secretary Donald Reagan. Brian Barron has just sent us this report. It was a frontal attack with a gunman smashing his pickup vehicle through the gate. Because Mr Reagan's golfing weekend was widely publicised, there were scores of police on duty already. They quickly surrounded the golf professional shop where the gunman had seized a member of the White House party. Mr Reagan himself was playing golf, but within minutes he telephoned the gunman who answered the phone but wouldn't talk. But Mr Reagan's intervention led to a dramatic breakthrough. Within minutes, the gunman released his hostage. By then, the president's wife, along with other VIPs, was being escorted away from the golf course, which was surrounded by police and secret servicemen. And the president and his golfing chums, including Secretary of State Schultz and the Treasury Secretary, Mr. Regan, were also driven away under heavy escort. Over on BBC Two in a moment, there'll be international snooker highlights. Here on BBC One, we brace ourselves for the start of another series of live Carrots Lib. And that is his name. <laughs> That's the name of the MP the press won't reveal. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you're a bit late, you've missed it now. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, if you remember, the last time we met was on June the 9th, when the election had just finished. And in such a short time, so many of those great election night promises have already been broken. Like, of course I'll marry you. <laughs> In just four months, some great political figures have bit the dust. Michael Foote, Tony Benn, Roy Jenkins, Pete Murray. <laughs> <laughs> of course, what has taken up most of our time in the last four months has been winds of war. I mean, after the first episode, it was just like the real war. You know, people were saying, don't worry, it'll all be over by Christmas. <laughs> in, in, case, in case anyone didn't see Robert Mitchum's brilliant performance, right, this is what you missed, OK? <laughs> was the highlight. <laughs> they say his acting was wooden. Personally, I think that's an insult to trees. <laughs> I was lucky. I was on a holiday when most of it was on. Mm. And I had a problem with holidays this year. Yeah, I mean, I you know, fancied going somewhere different. I was looking through all the holiday brochures. Right? And I've got about 12, 14 of them. And I was looking through and I realised that I can't go on half of the holidays advertised because I'm over age. <laughs> Half the holidays are for these 18 to 30 year old village adventure things. You know, with sort of subtle titles like Happy Humping Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and Thrust Vacations. <laughs> Promising you holidays where you'll need like the sexual appetite of a cabinet minister. <laughs> A mate of mine went on one of these holidays in the summer, you know, and uh, the thing is, he's 34 years old, and he was petrified in case he got found out. <laughs> and when he got there, he found he was the youngest bloke there. <laughs> Everyone else was 45 plus, you know, trying to look 29, you know, jogging everywhere and painting zits on the chin. <laughs> 
whistling Kajagoogoo's latest hit. <laughs> He's doing the twist to it, which is the right giveaway, isn't it? <laughs> the place was knee deep in steridon cans, you know, and <laughs> toupee fixative tubes. Because when you're 45 plus, you've got to take two toupees, haven't you? One for your head and one for your chest. <laughs> or the one for the chest is essential because when you throw your frisbee, it stops you being scarred for life by the gold medallion crashing into it. <laughs> Talking of holidays, did you read Butlins have closed two of their brothel holiday camps? <laughs> yeah, I used to be employed by Butlins, you know. Yeah, I, was, I worked down at Bognor Regis for three months as a duffel coat. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, Butlins is, is too available. I mean, anyone can go there. These days, you have to cater for exclusivity. I mean, you have to appeal to people's vanity, and you're on to a winner. I mean, for instance, everybody wants to join Mensa. You know, the really exclusive club for the, for the super brains. People with IQs of over 148. It means they can, they can answer all those essential questions like, what's the odd one out between a lion, Weybridge High Street, <laughs> woman's own, and a fly? <laughs> the answer's a fly, because it's the only one that will pass through a tennis racket. <laughs> I took the test and failed, you know. <laughs> I think I was suffering from pre-Mensa tension, I don't know. <laughs> then again, I mean, is, is Mensa such a big deal? Do you know who's a member? Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile is a member of Mensa. That's never right, surely. <laughs> how come, how come, if Jimmy Savile's got an IQ of 150 plus, he can't even sing the whole of the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> He's been trying for years to remember it. It infuriates me. He gets the first five notes right, then it dries up. He said, uh, uh. <laughs> And you I don't know, but you keep going, don't you? Uh, uh, uh. Da, da, da. <laughs> He's on top of the pops, isn't he? Uh, uh, uh. And everybody's going, da, da, da. Surely with all the time he spends hanging around waiting for trains, he can remember that. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Da, da, da. Drives you mad. If, if you can't join Mensa, what options are open to you? Well, you can have part of your brain removed so you can join the organisation for people with an IQ of less than six. <laughs> it's called the National Front. <laughs> uh, to give this proper title, the NF, because National Front is three syllables. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful for the members, isn't it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so NF is most <laughs> <laughs> And I've got a call song. Oh what? Oh what? <laughs> oh what? Hey, you got bloody Mensa going, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and that's the phone going, oh what? <laughs> Sooner we all have vasectomies, the better. <laughs> that's a, that's another exclusive club. Vasectomy members. I mean, you have a vasectomy and they give you a club tie. It's easily recognisable, it's snipped off at the bottom. <laughs> and it's got this really tight little knot at the top. <laughs> well, they swear it as an advert, don't they? You know, Hi there, girls, I'm safe. <laughs> Mind you, the blokes I find the funniest are, are, these, are these Freemasons. I, I mean, they wear little aprons, don't they? And, oddball hats and they wave their arms and make these strange signs to each other. In fact, when they get together, it looks like a meeting like deaf and dumb pervert butchers. <laughs> Nothing annoys me more when I meet one and they, they, they give you one, one of them sort of secret masonic handshakes, don't they? I mean, some of them in the advanced stages of leprosy. <laughs> 
But the most, the most exclusive club I've ever heard of is called the Mile High Club. <laughs> you don't know that one, do you? The Mile High Club. They are the people who have sex in the toilets of airliners. People who have sex in toilets not in airliners are not so exclusive. Why is it some people want to have sex in small, smelly cubicles at 30,000 feet? <laughs> I suppose because they're just incurable romantics. <laughs> and, like, and the cubicles are so small. How do they manage to do it? They just hold on tight and pray for air turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before we go any further, uh, I'd like to introduce you to the team that will be helping me tonight and for the rest of the series. Uh, will you please welcome from the last series, Mr. Nick Wilton. Uh, from, the, from the election special, Chris Barrett. And, uh, and our two newcomers, Jan Ravens. Mr. Nick Maloney. <laughs> right, what have you got for us tonight, Mr. Wilton? Uh, the government has said that it is definitely going ahead with plans to sell off British Telecom. Unfortunately, every time someone phones up with an offer, they can't get through. <laughs> the CND march in Moscow was called off today when the man fell ill. <laughs> Anna Ford is offered £80,000 and offered her job back by TVAM, she celebrates by hurling a glass of wine down her throat. <laughs> the world of soap opera is struck by tragedy as Noel Gordon returns to Crossroads. <laughs> After interviewing Prince Andrew on TVAM, David Frost says he's not worried about protocol and let the prince call him David. <laughs> Mecca and Rank Leisure announced that unless the newspapers stop printing bingo cards on their pages, they're going to start calling out newspaper headlines in their bingo halls. <laughs> Mark Thatcher looked around a Lotus car on the opening day of the motor fair. They've just found him in the boot. <laughs> Neil Kinnock is the new leader of the Labour Party. Of course, the Conservatives have also got a Neil every time they want to speak to Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> The government announced further cuts in house building, in house repairing, in education and in hospital. A judge ordered an immigrant who tried to enter the country illegally to be remanded for psychiatric reports. <laughs> and Nigel Lawson, Chancellor of the Exchequer, said that he believed we would soon have zero inflation. Mr Lawson also believes the world is flat. <laughs> that pigs can fly and it don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. you thought it was safe to park in the West End again. <laughs> Plants, coming to your car soon. You know, whenever I used to go round and visit my friends in showbiz, I had to put up with some pretty awful yes. coffee. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Luckily, nowadays, Everyone in showbiz has changed to this. <laughs> Stop the coffee. This is what we call mellow. How do you want it? Um, 
a little incision here and a couple of short ones down there. Yeah? You don't fancy a big one across here and then another long big one down the middle? Huh? Um... I think it would suit you. All right, go on. OK. <laughs> been away this year? Uh, no, no, I I've been ill. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, planning on going away, though, are you? Uh, well, not really. We hadn't made any plans, no. It, it depends if I pull through. Oh. <laughs> That's it, coffee. Uh, no, actually, I feel a bit sick. God, you ought to have your hands in here, mate. That'll soon make you sick. <laughs> what a mess. Where'd you go last time? Uh, guys. Oh, dear, but well, they made a right mess of you. <laughs> it's all lopsided. What do you do for a living, then? Uh, I'm a barrister. Oh, eh? Dead clever, are you? Dead clever, eh? Uh, Need a bit of brains for that, don't you? Well, not really, no. Hey, still, I bet the money's good, though, isn't it? Well, we... we manage. Uh, they don't pay you much here, you know. In fact, I'm thinking of starting up my own hospital. I've got a great name for it. I'm going to call it a circumcision above the rest. <laughs> there you go. How's that? Oh, yes, yes. Nice, though, yeah. I told you the long one would suit you, didn't I? Yeah, it's nice, that, yeah. Yeah, hang on. Have you seen my comb? Chicken Pate brings you the week's news from around the world. And the British Motor Fair opens with the unveiling of the latest Austin Maestro. Not only does the new model talk to you, if you drive too fast, it wets itself. <laughs> Visitors to the fair witness a demonstration of the Sunreader's AA relay service. A, car, a plane or a boat. A Sunreader will tow your broken vehicle wherever you want it to go. Meanwhile, on the political scene, Norman Tebbit takes over from Cecil Parkinson. Ed Norman, well prepared and very much looking forward to his first day on the job. <laughs> the media and very worried Channel 4 bosses continue to cater for minority groups with their new autumn season using unknown actors who until now have only appeared in chum adverts. The season includes One Dog and His Dog and Shakespeare's Macbeth. Out, damn spot. Out, I say. <laughs> Wednesday, and the chicken paddy cameras film the 1983 Music Critics Awards. Here's Roger Whittaker being honoured for his evergreen hit, I'm Gonna Leave Old Durham Town. Times <laughs> critic Milton Schumann administers the award. Well done, Roger. Just look at his face. He can hardly contain his joy. Congratulations again. It's nothing less than you deserve. Saturday, and it's soccer, as Football League champions Liverpool find a novel way of coping with QPR's AstroTurf. <laughs> Here's Kenny Galdrish. He's through. Oh, good tackle from Stainlock. And Bruce Grubler stamps his feet in frustration. <laughs> But finally, the main event of the week is the CND march through London. Thousands of people attend. Here's Zelig, but he's not the only one. Here's a party calling themselves Veruca Sufferers Against the Bomb. <laughs> and here's the CND branch of Alcoholics Anonymous marching in strict formation through the streets of the city. <laughs> and that's the week in focus from Chicken Cutte News. Look, if you want to be good journalists, you've got to make up witty names for politicians. Okay, now there's a lot of new names about to have a go at. You can do things like, uh, say, Roy Hattersley. Okay, he could be Fatty Hattie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or the Mad Hattersley. <laughs> Get it? Get it? Easy, isn't it? Anyway, we'll start off with an easy one. Let's have some, let's have some witty names for Neil Kinnock. Okay, funny names for Neil Kinnock. Uh, how about the Welsh windbag? Eh? 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the Welsh rabbit. Welsh rabbit. Good, good. That's good. That's better. Yes. Nap tap. <laughs> <laughs> nap tap. I like that. Yes. Good, good. How about Neil Pillock? <laughs> <laughs> Philip, good, I like it. Uh, what about the leader of the Labour Party? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the leader of the Labour Party. Um, I'm sorry, you're in the wrong class. Uh, this is for Daily Mail reporters. <laughs> uh, the Guardian is next door. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go for. comes the night Star shadows passing over me I'm feeling the chill ever since you've been gone I'm thinking of you girl Wondering if you're going to return to me Was it a waste of time all we've been through When I the animals if you didn't recognize them there's another blast from the 60s what what is it about the 60s that makes people remember them so fondly I mean I lived through the 60s you know <laughs> hard to believe yeah I, know. <laughs> I mean personally I thought the 60s was a load of bunk yeah, I mean in the 60s everybody was saying hey weren't the 40s great <laughs> you know do you remember Powdered egg and ration books, buzz bombs, death. 
that's what's happened to the 60s. It's like a, sort of like a rose-coloured job's been done on it. You know? I mean, people, people say to me, oh, remember all those wonderful pirate radio stations? Oh, yeah, I mean, great idea, round up all the disc jockeys, send them out on boats into the middle of nowhere and leave them there. <laughs> of course, they escaped and became heroes. Do you realise in the 60s, Tony Blackburn was a cult? <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> that was a, a very 60s word, that cult. And actually, there's quite a few words from that era that, that sort of threw up that we don't use anymore. Things like, we don't use swinging, fab, groovy, job. <laughs> Long forgotten phrases like, here comes the bus. <laughs> It was, also, it was also very in to be trendy. Trends were all the rage, you know, there was, like, there was the miniskirt nine inches above the knee, you know, fine. But embarrassing for Lulu, because she didn't have nine inches. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there were trendy people like Mary Quant and Kathy McGowan. And do you remember Thank Your Lucky Stars with Janice Nichols? I'll give it five. <laughs> put Birmingham back 200 years <laughs> into the 11th century. <laughs> I knew you'd laugh at that one. I? <laughs> the biggest, the biggest trendsetter around in the 60s was Mick Jagger. Eh? Now, he's got a lot to answer for us, Mick. Eh? I mean, what he did with Mars bars was unforgivable. <laughs> I mean, for ages, the rest of us couldn't buy a Mars bar without dying of embarrassment. <laughs> hey, you'd be standing in the corner shop, wouldn't you, you know, fidgeting about, like, hoping the bloke would serve you, you know. Like, uh, it was always his wife, wasn't it? Hello? Can I help you? Um... Can I have a... Um, can I have a... Um, can I have a... Um, oh, give us a packet of Jurex. <laughs> understand why the music of the era is so revered. I mean, sure we had the Beatles and, and the Beach Boys, but we also had Bobby V, <laughs> the original wimp. <laughs> I mean, any decay that starts off with, I'm a rubber ball and I'm bouncing back to you, <laughs> has got to be heading down the pan, hasn't it? <laughs> and we had Frank Ifield and Wink Martindale, Peter, Paul and Mary singing Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> hey, that was a protest song then. I mean, but we did, have, we did have great demos in the 60s. I mean, we, we had the CND marches, of course, and we had Vietnam, Cuba. I mean, those days, the police had a fail-safe method of crowd dispersal. Joan Bias. <laughs> <laughs> hey, three quarters of Earth screeching, we shall overcome, and Hyde Park had declared in seconds. <laughs> People, people envy the permissiveness of the age, you know, free love, orgies, lovings. And they said, I bet you had great rave up parties then, eh, eh, eh? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, far out. Eh? The place would be a, a wash with Bulmer's woodpecker cider, wouldn't it? <laughs> if it was a 21st, you'd have a bottle of Hirondelle. And, and everybody was supposed to be on drugs in the 60s. Eh? <laughs> Most people I knew couldn't tell the difference between marijuana and bovril. <laughs> Times I've been at parties and someone's passed around a woodbine. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, hey man, Acapulco Gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind, but it had a filter tip. <laughs> when I think of it, 40 people trying to get high on a woodbine. <laughs> hey, you'd all be there, wouldn't you? Go. <clears throat> I say this is hot shit. <laughs> A couple of puffs and we'd all be swearing blind. The Labrador was melting, you know? <laughs> then the flower power mob would gate crash. Eh? All those wallies in caftans and bits of garden growing out of them, you know? <laughs> They'd have this fab spaced out feeling in their head, man. It was blooming hay fever. <laughs> They'd make us all sit round the dance set record player. 
eh, while somebody played the Beatles Sgt Pepper album backwards because they heard that if you did that there was a message from the devil <laughs> and there was and it said you are knackering up your stylus <laughs> People who brought to you Captain Starlet, Joe 90, and Blunderbirds come a new Space Age puppet serial, Error Hawk. From the control center somewhere in the clouds, Commander Reagan and his crew keep watch over the world, making sure those commie bastards, uh, sorry, the alien man is held at bay. This week, the commander and his head of defense, Weinberger 4000, prepare for perhaps the greatest trial of all, facing the press. Okay, Weinberger. How do I look? F.A.B., Commander. But I think we should turn the heating down a little. Why is that, Weinberger? You're beginning to melt. God damn it, I always look like this. <laughs> My apologies, Commander. Now, you know what to say when the press arrive. Sure I do. Now, we have no intention, we've... Well, we have no intention of using our nuclear weapons in a first strike capacity. Gee, Commander, your mouth has jammed. I wasn't talking through my mouth. <laughs> hubba, hubba, what a sweetie. It's Nyla Nancy. Hello, boys. Hiya, Nancy. What are you doing here? I live here. I am the first lady, after all. No, honey, Jane Wyman was the first. You're the second. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, sugar? Oh, I found the button you were looking for. My shirt button? No, the nuclear button. <laughs> Swell, I was wondering where I left it. Uh, Nancy, your feet aren't touching the ground. Uh-oh, one facelift too many. <laughs> Commander, I think we're ready to start now. Just a moment. Lieutenant Fiberglass? Yes, sir, e, Commander. <laughs> Send in some more Grecian 2000. <laughs> A.D., sir, the tank is waiting outside. Oh, I almost forgot. Lieutenant Fiberglass? Hello? Lieutenant Fiberglass? Uh, I think you pressed the wrong button, Commander. <laughs> you just wiped out New York. Is that one of ours or one of theirs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Oh, gosh, his autoprompt has jammed again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. My name is Fred Gorman. Have you ever noticed when company bosses appear on TV advertising their own companies, they always talk very stilted and stupid sounding. Not only that, the inflection is always wrong. So if you are a company boss and you are thinking of appearing on TV, why not phone me at the Fred Gorman <laughs> Vocal Training School <laughs> and learn how to present yourself as smoothly and efficiently as I do. <laughs> so remember the name Frank Gorman. Fred Gorman. <laughs> Fred Gorman, for visual and vocal presentation. <laughs> and how to hold poses for a long time. Now, come on, don't play games with us. This is the South African police force you're dealing with. We know what you're up to. Granted, it's a brilliant disguise, but you can't fool us. We know you're Lord Lucan. And in the second round, Janet Collins, a school teacher from Gwent, has chosen as her specialist subject video nasties, 1980 to 83. <laughs> Janet. 
In which early nasty did the heroine lose both her feet during a routine interrogation in a concentration camp graveyard? Please may I tear off your limbs? Correct. <laughs> in the children's classic, I drill holes in your teddy bear, what precisely oozed out of the decomposing corpse? Pass. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> After the now legendary spitting sequence in He Sandpapered Their Genitals, <laughs> what happens to the Colonel at the abattoir? Well, uh, they stuff live rats up his nose, suck out his brains with the hoover, and feed his entrails to the sex-crazed killer nuns. Correct. <laughs> Moving on to rip out my stomach on a Wednesday and mince it up, what does Klaus do with the werewolf's intestines after the contents of his stepchild's coffin are sold to a fast food chain while the mutilated go-go dancers are trading loose bits of flesh with the devil? He goes into a song. Correct. <laughs> and Janet, at the end of that round, you have scored four points. And the ones you passed on were respectively brain globules, nine and a half, put his frog in a liquidizer, and I vomit on your mother's birthday. <laughs> and the film about the man in Dallas who impregnated 742 women with herpes was, of course, the Texas Cold Sore Massacre. <laughs> from a Yorkshire County Cricket Club and uh, during the last few days we've seen a very interesting conflict developing. Boycott, as we expected, open proceedings by creeping round the back, climbing over the gate and establishing himself in a corner at the far end of the boardroom. Here he proved very difficult to dislodge, especially after he managed to get both hands round a pillar. But uh, he was dismissed by a vicious bouncer who got him by the throat and threw him out of the window. Good effort that, I thought. <laughs> After the uh, lunch interval, things quietened down a bit until Boycott again managed to smuggle himself in, this time disguised as a double glazing salesman. I've seen a few things in my time, but that takes the biscuit. Despite several strident appeals that he should go boil his head, he stood his ground until a vicious inswing and knocked him into the middle of next week. Marvellous effort that, I thought. <laughs> At the end of the day, the situation remains the same, with the committee having brought in two dozen security guards and a night watchman, one of whom looks surprisingly like... No, it can't be. There it is then, back to the studio. All right, love, how much do you charge? 25. Okay, let's go. Right. Police, you're under arrest. We're fed up with you people pestering with him down this street. And this will teach you a li Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't recognise you, Inspector. Do you have trouble with words? Did you leave school unable to read? Do you find this prevents you getting on in your job? Well, stop worrying and join one of our adult literacy courses. Just send a stamped addressed envelope to this address. Adult Literacy Courses, 78-9, Buckton Road, Forest Gate, London, SE17, 9SG. One chicken. And I'll have the same, but to start, could I have a walnut salad, please? A number seven for the guy here, please, straight away. I can't wait a walnut salad. Walnut salad? I thought you said Waldorf. <laughs>
highlights for Sunday evening on BBC One. At 7.15, Penelope Keith and Christopher Villiers star in Sweet Sixteen. Marry me. That's the deal. Take it or leave it. Oh, it's all business, is it? Hmm. Seems practical. Yes, so is a tea bag, but sooner or later they burst in your cup and all the little bits float to the top and get stuck in your tea. At 7.45, by the sword divided, and the tension rises as relations between the King and Parliament worsen. The state brings articles of high treason and high misdemeanor against Mr. Denzel Hollies, Sir Arthur Hazelrig, Mr. John Pym, Mr. John Hamden, and Mr. William Strode. At 8.40, the good old days. by the sword divided and the good old days highlights of Sunday evening on BBC One